So what do you think guys? A big package. 26 kg of 3D printer. This video and this unit, this package here is sponsored by Banggood. So I say big thanks to them to send this to me. I think this 3D printer will be really really good. If you want to buy a 3D printer and support me, support Banggood, please check the links down below and I will talk a little bit more about them later on. The printer inside here is the Ender 6 from Creality. It's a new XYZ printer that I delivered earlier last year and comparing this to my current printer that is the CR10S, this one is supposed to be able to print a lot faster and give a lot nicer prints at higher speeds. But also note that this printer, comparing to my 10S, is also a little bit smaller in terms of the build surface. This one has a 250 by 250 by 400 mm total volume, and my current 10S has 300 by 300 by 400 build volume. It looks to be very nicely, neatly packaged. A lot of foam. And at the top here, we have the build manual. And it contains everything inside, how to put this together and what's included into the package. This is the acrylic sides. Some people have had issues with the holes here, we'll see about that for me. And we, here we have the doors. I must say, it's really really nicely packaged. Another door. More foam. Ooh. There are people that are talking about that you can mount a bigger plate on this one by doing some smaller modifications, we'll see about that. And I also like that they have the bigger knobs, it's easier to level it. And it seems to be a plate of 250 watts with some insulation as well. I don't know why they don't add the insulation around everything here. All the accessories, I guess the screws and everything. And they actually shipped this one with a dual extruder all in metal. That's a really great upgrade compared to my CR10 that have a single that is in plastic. This one would do a lot when you are printing in higher speeds for sure. and a spool of white PLA and here we have all the corner brackets and in the bottom here we have the top part of this printer it looks to be the same extruder as the CR10S have, the same layout um, this one comes with no automatic bed leveling functionality. Uh, I might add this later on. And in the bottom of this package, ooh, that was heavy. We have the actual main bottom unit, and this weighs a ton. I would guess this alone is 12 to 15 kilos. So let's arrange this on the table. So here guys we have everything to mount this printer together. This is not a build video as such, I'm not going to show you every detail because Creality themselves have a really good video about that. And there is plenty of other people that have made videos as well. I will link in down below a really really good 3D printer channel that I like a lot. 
but you will of course see me do this in a speed way where I talk a little bit about some tips and tricks on how to get this together. Important here is to actually follow the manual because if you don't do that you will most likely end up mounting some things in the wrong order and you won't get them together properly. So if you do that everything will work just fine. So let's go over to time lapse mode and get this thing And the first print of this printer is now done. Four hours roughly. So let's take a look. You can see that the bed is still pretty warm. The print looks pretty even. I got some issues with this bed. It's a glass bed. I don't like glass beds myself personally. Because I don't think it sticks good enough. And I don't want to fiddle around with glue and stuff. So. For me, this is not really ideal. I had to run the bed at roughly 60 plus degrees. And then I actually got to stick. The first two attempts at 50 did not work. Now the question is, how do I get this off? There it came. If we take a look at it here. Support material. Support material. And then we also have, we do have some support material in the middle. Let's see if we can get that out. Look at that. Look at how fine and nice this print is. It is very, very, very nice very little support material left there and we have some curliness underneath there but except from that this is I would say spot on for the first try without doing that much of settings but of course this is printed with 0.4 millimeter nozzle 
and currently I don't run 0.4 so let's go ahead and for the second print add a 0.6 millimeter nozzle instead and you can see me do that I have the nozzles here I bought two new nozzles precisely 13 the stock one and the new ones are 13 that's really really good to get the nozzle out you need to retract the filament a little bit before you actually do anything so let me go back and do that and to do that we need to change the temperature on the nozzle we put that to 200 okay. so let's just carefully remove this silicone cover like that and when it's hot again you should be able to move, remove this watch your fingers There we go. Before a nozzle cools down, you can actually clean it by gently pulling this out. And your nozzle is 100% clean for the next run. A quick little tip. Take a new nozzle and put this in be aware of that this one is hot now and will heat up fairly quickly so don't hold your fingers on it for too long and then you take your tool screw that to its place and back with the PTFE all the way down and this is really important because otherwise it will clog up and back with the blue ring and we are re almost ready to go next step is actually to level this again because even though the length is correct this one will work a little bit differently so let's insert this here I'm running leveling So I'm basically using the software to move it around and making sure that I can fit the paper under. Just barely, I want this to be very tight. Check the middle. It's too tight still. That feels good. And now you're basically ready to print with this printer. It's calibrated to what I like to have it. And of course, if you follow the links down below in the beginning of this video, you have done all the other calibration steps as well as in stepping and everything like that. And if you have done that, you will get a print like this one that is, I would say, 100% spot on. There is no ringing, nothing. There is the surface is so darn small and now when we have changed the nozzle to 0.6 you need to redo everything again so before I print here I'm actually going to hook up this this is a Raspberry Pi uh, currently POE and with a camera and I'm running Octoprint and that makes it possible for me to remote control this printer 110% though beware of when you do this the sensor for the filament will most likely not work depending on the version that you have on the printer. So that might be that you need to upgrade. We need to add this and to do that we need to flip this on the side, open the bottom up, insert the cable and connect this up to do the first print. So let me do that. One note when you do this, as soon as you move the printer around like this, Beware of that you may need to recalibrate it afterwards. So don't forget that if your print sucks. Yeah. 
So basically this is the inside. You have the fan to cool off this board. You have the music box or the loudspeaker that you hear the beeps from. The PSU itself, 360 watt, 24 volt, so that's pretty good actually. And you have the board here. And if you look at the board closely, you will see that there is an outlet there that you can use. So I'm going to hook that up for now. Be aware of when using the USB cables, you may need to cut or and open the cable and remove the red wire. And that's because you will be backfeeding this board from the Raspberry Pi. This depends a little bit on what type of board you are connecting to. In my case, I'm just going to route this out in the corner like that for now. So I can easily attach this. So it's time to wrap this video up. What do I think about the printer? First of all, thanks Banggood for sending me the printer. Um, that was really nice and I think it was a really good printer as well. So if you want to support my work and everything, please check out their links down below to this printer. But also if you want to buy some other printers, there is links for that as well. What's positive and negative with this printer? The positive side is of course the overall design of XYZ makes it a very versatile and quick printer in terms of moving around. That is nothing that I can take away from that. The disadvantage of having this design is that the print surface and everything inside is quite small. My CR10 can print a lot larger things in terms of the, the surface area on the print bed. Of course some people state that this can be enlarged and you could have a 30 by 30 centimeter print area instead. But I don't know. With that said, in regards to the overall design, I like it. It could have come with some kind of top as well, so you could have kept the warmth and the heat inside of this cage instead. So that's a disadvantage. When you start to push more and more material through, and I'm running 0.6mm nozzle, the width is 0.75mm and the height of all the layers is 04 That's quite a lot of material. If I would have been running 0.4mm nozzle instead with standard height and width, I could easily, I could easily push this printer to 150mm per second, with no doubt at all. I was running 120 the other day and it just performed flawlessly. But with the current setup here, I think around 50 is the, the maximum limit. But with that said, at that rate, the prints are really, really nice and they hold up very, very good. Is this a printer for the normal person? I would say so. It's quite quiet, it's quite sturdy and it will work. And it doesn't take up more space than you see here. And of course you will have the filament on the side of it instead of up here that I have currently. When it comes to building this printer, it was really quick I would say. It didn't take me even one and a half hour to get this together. And then I think I spent 20 minutes setting it up or something like that. It doesn't take long to set up a printer like this as long as you know how to level the bed. And the bed itself, the glass bed here with a structure, it works really well with PLA. As long as you heat the bed to around 60 degrees Celsius, everything sticks and it sits there throughout the whole print without issues. And as soon as it gets below 40 degrees, things just pop loose and you can remove them without, without any problem at all. I have not tried this printer with any other any other material than PLA right now. PLA is what I run mainly, but that works fine. So once again guys, I would like to thank you for watching this video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. And if you have time, check out the links down below to Banggood for this printer. And in the upcoming videos, I will show you some really great use of what you can use a 3D printer to in terms of printing usable stuff that you can't really buy in the store. And actually, it's actually cheaper to print those things than buying them. So stay tuned for that. And thanks once again for watching, and I see you next time. Bye.